Hi, my dear friends, Manir was Jay Kumar here. How are you doing? Uh, so, guys, recently the Corporate Law Committee met and they released a report. And this, these are the proposed changes which will probably take shape in the form of Companies Amendment Bill 2022, and which eventually will become a law and would be incorporated as amendments very soon. So, in today's uh, video, I just want to tell you the key changes that have come in the auditors area. So, this is regarding the auditing subject very much relevant for CA inter and CA final auditing in the future of course. So what are the key changes and even for us uh, you know chartered accountants and all CA aspiring chartered accountants we really need to know what is in it for us in the future what's in store for the future. So let's see uh, due to various frauds that have happened since the past few years and you also know that the NFRA is has been established and it's working full time now to ensure uh, how an auditor's independence can be protected and how the quality of work can be improved. Uh, so, because of the, you know, especially the ILFS scam which went to almost around 90,000 crores, the key focus as per the Corporate Law Committee's recommendations would be on ensuring the auditor's independence. So, they have um, some measures regarding the same. Uh, we will discuss that quickly. So, first of all, Ministry is taking up priority to uh, increase the bar on statutory audits, right? So they are trying to see whether the number of statutory audits should be increased, decreased and all these things and more responsibility. For instance, let me uh, show you the uh, Bayer Act of course uh, to understand one thing. Let's say for example in 143 subsection 1, if you see here, as regards the uh, responsibility of the holding company's auditor. So it says the auditor of the holding company shall also have the right to access the records of all the subsidiary and associate companies in so far as it relates to consolidation of the financial statements. So, hitherto, till now, all the statutory auditor of a holding company has to see is, of course, rely on the books of the, uh, you know, subsidiary companies and associate companies audited by other auditors, and then in so far as it relates only to consolidation. Now, the corporate law committee said that no, two things should happen. One change should be what? That the subsidiary company and associate company auditors I need to throw more responsibility on them and then they have to report properly now to the holding company's auditor and the holding company's auditor also should not only, what do you say, just uh, use these books for in relation to consolidation but also should be in a position to comment on the truthfulness and fairness of the subsidiary companies and associate companies books of accounts as well. So, that scope they want to bring in more changes in this particular area. So, this area here 143 subsection 1 is going to undergo a drastic change in the near future, right? So, we were talking about uh, auditor's independence. All these points are covered in that itself. This also second point number 2. Third one, we already know that there are, uh, there is a section 144 where it disallows, uh, you know, uh, statutory auditors from performing some non-audit services. Now, they want to tighten the news further. I mean, of course, there are many services listed in 144, uh, management services, actuarial services, and, you know, your uh, financial information system services, but they want to tighten the news further. For example, we also have to give a certificate as statutory auditors for your ECB utilization, uh, linking it to our corporate law, you know, and FEMA. So, even that may be, they may say that, no, a CA in practice who is a statutory auditor of that particular company should not be in a position to provide any such certification as such. So, we have to wait and watch because this is what the committee has told that to enable the central government to prescribe a separate list of prohibitions in addition to whatever is there in 144, right? Or total prohibition availing non-audit services for such classes of companies. And they have also linked it to NFRA and they have highlighted for which all companies, uh, you know, NFRA would be applicable. So, for example, tomorrow they may amend 144 and they will may give an enabling provision to the CG saying that for certain prescribed class of companies or those companies which uh, require, which come under the uh, lens of NFRA, that there is an additional list over and above 144 additional list where the chartered accountants cannot do these services. So, for example, companies whose securities are listed on any stock exchange in India or outside India as well, unlisted public companies having paid up capital of 500 CR or more, annual turnover 1000 CR or more or outstanding loans debentures, 500 crore or more as on 31st March of the previous year, and insurance companies, banking companies. So, for all these things, maybe they will add one more enabling provision in 144 itself, whereby a separate list will be given, and completely you will be prohibited from doing those things. So, as you can see, my dear friends, 
the noose has been tightened you know around the statutory auditor's neck fortunately or unfortunately so these are some sweeping changes that are going that are you know uh, being proposed by the corporate law committee now this is the third one is what i was explaining coming to the fourth one my dear friends this as i told you it's already for listed companies public companies etc there may be some relief for private companies you have to wait and watch i already explained this fourth one so my dear friends now if you see uh, my section 139 sub section 3 it says subject to the provisions of this act members of a company may resolve to provide for audit to be conducted by more than one auditor so as of now uh, barring insurance companies and other companies uh, where the what do you say those legislation will override companies act barring those legislations uh, for all companies which come under companies act joint audit was discretionary but because of the uh, you know amount of work that a ca has to uh, undertake and the amount of responsibility involved this may is proposed to be you know changed to shall especially when it comes to joint audit so my dear friends for certain type of companies compulsory joint audits is what is proposed so an enabling provision will be uh, made in the near future whereby for certain type of companies if you remember in 139 to rotation there were certain companies where rotation is applicable mandatorily so maybe for those companies they may also say apart from rotation also joint audit is compulsory maybe right so we do not know which type of companies that we have to wait and watch but definitely uh, companies joint audits are going to be made mandatory for certain type of companies is what we are trying to tell now my dear friends if we also check this 143 as per the reporting requirements are concerned if you check this um, yeah if you see for instance right yeah point number f 143 3f the auditor has to give observations or comments on what the financial transactions or matters which have any adverse effect on the functioning of the company that is one part of the story then here any qualification reservation or adverse remark relating to the maintenance of accounts so clause number 143 3 clause number f and h so here qualification reservation or adverse remark as per the guidance note it means qualification means qualified opinion reservation means disclaimer of opinion and adverse remark means adverse opinion on what maintenance of accounts on the other hand the uh, one on uh, f point is what so anything that has any adverse effect on the functioning of the company based on these comments under section 134.3 the board had to report saying that look these are the explanations that we are giving for the queries that you have raised so for all queries raised under 143.3 f and 143.3 h the directors had to report under 134.3 but dear friends nowhere here was the auditor required to talk about the impact on the economic health of the company impact on the functioning of the company they are just trying to tell that observations which will have an adverse effect but what is the impact what is the real financial impact is not mandated here so as per the corporate law committee change impact analysis also should be given in the audit report so our essay 700 705 706 uh, read with of course 143.3 will undergo a change where an auditor has to also give uh, the analysis of the impact uh, with respect to those two clauses so a very good change uh, not only the uh, fact that there is a uh, effect but also what exactly is the effect is what an auditor has to report then seventh one if you see as of now under section 140 as regards the resignation is concerned uh, auditor who has resigned shall file within a period of 30 days from the date of resignation a prescribed form as you know and then he should obviously uh, give you reasons uh, under section uh, 139 5 to the c and ag as well now resignation is mandatory definitely yes and also you should give the reasons also of resignation correct the reasons also of resignation uh, should be given but it did not speak about what type of reasons the exact reason so many things what the corporate law committee has observed is even though there is a high risk factor in the company or even though there is undue pressure uh, from the board etc the directors used to give a reason saying personal reasons it used to happen so what these people have told is they have now adopted the us uh, sorry the uk company law 
UK company law of 2006, if I'm not wrong. So they have adopted that and they have told the exact specific reason has to be disclosed, right? The exact specific reason. It could be what? Like non-cooperation, like high fraud risk. So I want the exact one, right? Not just saying that reasons, personal reasons, no. And now, my dear friends, the proposal is if you do not give the exact reasons, auditor would be held liable. Auditor would be held liable. So these are the sweeping changes in the auditing subject, my dear friends, and the auditor's provisions. There are other changes in uh, meetings and, uh, you know, in the uh, share capital chapter. There are quite a few, almost around 30, 35 changes, amendments that are being proposed. Uh, these areas will not be applicable for the November 22 examination, of course, and we'll have to see whether it's applicable for May 23 or November 23, but whatever it is, aspirant, aspirant, uh, as CA aspirants and aspiring chartered accountants and of course if those of us who are already chartered accountants these changes we need to know because this indicates what will be our future so i'll be releasing more such videos on all subjects uh, to also you know uh, keep we should keep ourselves abreast of the latest development that are happening this will be like short videos 15 minutes 10 to 15 minutes which will give us that uh, quick fire knowledge and we can all uh, share and learn so please comment what do you feel about the sweeping changes uh, is it going to affect the CA profession? I want to know your views. So kindly, you know, comment below. Like this uh, particular video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be, apart from normal classes, I'll also be, uh, you know, giving these, uh, in, according to me, these are interesting areas of discussion. So please comment. I want to know your views also regarding this as aspiring CAs. What is the future of a chartered accountant? I mean, is it really worth uh, entering practice or is it worth joining the industry? What is the impact of this, right, is what we need to understand. Cheers, guys.